This episode is brought to you by BottomsUpDelivery.com, GalianosFaction.com, and GhoulBeGone.com. Welcome, everybody, to the Bob and Katie Show. I'm Katie. And I'm Bob. So why don't you tell me what happened to my daughter's forehead while I was at work today? Oh, my goodness. I woke them. I didn't wake them. I went in there to get the kids this morning, and Reagan had a big old bite mark in the middle of her forehead. You sent me a picture. It wasn't a bite mark. It was bites marks. No, there was one this morning. Okay. And it's they're in this phase where they're biting each other. They take turns back and forth. Um, and it, a lot of times it happens when they're in the crib, like at night or first thing in the morning. And yeah, I'll get them in the morning. And like one of them almost always has a bite mark on them. This morning, Reagan had one in the middle of her forehead. How that really happens, I don't know. But then by this afternoon, she had a second bite mark identical to the first one right beside it. So two big old bite marks right on her forehead. Exactly the same. I mean, I knew Riley did it. But on her forehead. So they've moved from eating the crib. To, to biting eat, each other. To eating each other. Like, in the forehead. Like, how do you bite somebody's forehead? Did you leave them bath salts in there again? What? <laughs> you can't stop. If we have any parents that are listening that have multiples or even maybe some young kids that are close in age that had the biting stuff going on. Let us know how you dealt with it. Well, I know, like, bite them back. Like, my brother was a biter. I remember him biting me and my sister. He was a he was really bad. And my mom finally had to bite him back one day. And I know that's what lots and lots of parents do. And I think that works. But they're still so little. Like, they don't understand that what they're doing is wrong. I've tried telling them no, no. And, you know, if I catch one or the other of them biting the other... You know, I scold them, no, no, we don't bite. But they're too young for really anything. They're too young for me to bite them back, I think. So, I don't know. I don't know. They just, they bite the crap out of each other all the time. Did you bite her forehead? No! I can't believe you would insinuate such a thing. I don't need you throwing around these big words. You know I'm tired. So, what else did you do today? Ate pumpkin stuff. I am, (laughs) I, like, you're all about fall, I love fall. Yes, I'm one of those people. I love fall. I love everything about fall. There's pumpkin-scented candles in my house, pumpkin donuts, pumpkin Oreos, pumpkin coffee creamer. I'm so sick of pumpkins. Pumpkin muffins. Do we have pumpkin muffins, too? Maybe. It's just too many things that are pumpkin. I, I enjoy pumpkins. I love pumpkins, period. I think they're beautiful. And I just, I think they're just wonderful. Oh, look at the pumpkin. It's so pretty. I love pumpkins. I'm I do. sick of pumpkins. I love pumpkin flavored everything. Mm. Yeah, I'm one of those people. And I actually have some interesting pumpkin facts for you. So is that the topic you said you were, you were going to look into today? Yeah, I couldn't think of anything else. I don't want to talk about pumpkins. I love pumpkins though, and we're going to talk about pumpkins. These better be like some crazy pumpkin facts. I, like uh, when you read, when you read me whatever this is, my mind, my brain needs to look like the pumpkin guts after you tell me this. This better be, this better be phenomenal. Did you know that pumpkins are not a vegetable? They're a fruit. <laughs> it has honestly never crossed my mind to even think if it was a vegetable or a fruit. It's a fruit. It's actually in, and I don't, I'm not even going to attempt to say the word. It's in the gourd family with uh, cucumbers, squash, melons. But yeah, it's actually a fruit. No, I do like melons. Mm. And did you know that pumpkins grow on six out of seven of the continents of the world? Antarctica is the only exception. That sounds a lot like grass. But it's way more special. (laughs) <laughs> Did you know that pumpkins were once thought to be a cure for freckles? Okay, c- can you expound <laughs> on that one? Did you? I can't. I couldn't really find more information as to like how. All right, let me Google it. Yeah, I 
I, I wasn't able to find a whole lot more. That was like you finally came up with something interesting and you didn't look any further into it? <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. I was rushed. I was rushed. I should have. I just didn't even think about it. Pumpkins cure freckles. I was like, it was like, it was, it was like the main search. You didn't really? even, did you even try to Google it? No, I didn't. <laughs> and it's on a page called 10 Facts About Pumpkins. Is that where you went? No. Hmm. Okay. Years ago, people believed that pumpkins could cure freckles and snake bites. Yeah, that was going to be my next. Oh, did I, that, I took yeah, the, you, uh, I took you, the thunder. You stole my thunder. Thunder! How apparently you cured freckles by mixing 10 pounds of pumpkin with two spoonfuls of honey and a small amount of salt. That sounds like pie. <laughs> Here, eat this pumpkin pie and your freckles will disappear. I'm sure you probably weren't supposed to eat it. You're, what, were you supposed to like, put it on your face? You rubbed it on your face <laughs> and your freckles were gone. Well, they were still there. It's just that your face was covered with orange mush so you couldn't see them. And snake bites cured by throwing the pumpkin at the snake before it had a chance to bite you. I wonder how long ago this was that people said, or like they looked at you because you had freckles and they were like, something's wrong with this person. You need to go get 10 pounds of pumpkin. <laughs> like, Cure that mess. Hey, Johnny, go, go go grab a pumpkin. Something's wrong with Sam. <laughs> He's got freckles all over his face. It's sad to me that, to think that I guess that was once thought of as a bad thing. I don't have freckles, but I think freckles are adorable. Okay, so what's your what's your next fact? Let's go ahead and power through this. Did you know early settlers used pumpkins for the pie crust and not filling? What do they put in it? I don't know. I guess they put whatever fillings they wanted to in the pies. But yeah, they once, I guess maybe somebody somewhere along the line was like, hey, maybe we should put the pumpkin inside of the crust. But no, they actually did... They um, carved out the pumpkins and would put, I think it was milk and honey and um, uh, I can't remember, stuff like that inside of the pumpkin. And they would put it in like the ashes, you know, like how they would bake stuff. And they would bake it. And that was like, I guess, the origin of pumpkin pie. That's how oh, it got that's, started. That, that, that's kind of cool. My brain isn't exactly pumpkin mush yet, but we're getting there. Are you going to do that did you know thing again? Hmm. I feel like every time you say that, there should be like a rainbow over your head. Did you know pumpkin seeds help avoid prostate cancer in men? <laughs> How do you apply that? Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I do not know. He did what with them pumpkin seeds? Um. Anyway, that's that was my most interesting pumpkin facts. But I did, while I was thinking about pumpkins... I obviously had to look into the world's largest pumpkin because, you know, they have like these um, competitions, I guess you could call it. I wanted to find out like what the Guinness World Record was for the world's largest pumpkin. Okay. And uh, it was in Germany. Um, it says a Swiss gardener. I don't know. I guess the, the actual things, the event took place in Germany. I don't know. Sure. Um, anyway, he grew the world's largest pumpkin and it weighed 2,096.6 pounds. That's like a small car. That is like a small car. In fact, that's what it says. <laughs> you know, yeah. Do you know how many freckles you could cure with 2,000 pounds of pumpkin? You could cure a lot of freckles. But, uh, and as I was looking into this, I learned something. Because obviously, you know, the world's largest, it's not going to stay good forever. Pumpkins go bad. So um, I guess they asked what he was going to do with this humongous pumpkin. I saw a picture. It's huge. And uh, he said he would probably make a good soup out of the pumpkin. But. Please, but, please. You're not going to make any pumpkin soup, are you? Probably not. Maybe, okay. I, I don't know. Maybe I should now. Curious. But anyway, the seeds, whenever they have these contests for these giant pumpkins, like the pumpkins that win, the seeds are in high demand. For prostate cancer. Yeah. So people can, people will get them, buy them. Oh, to try to grow their own to pumpkins? To like germinate with, oh. yeah, and make their own world It's kind of like pumpkin. having like, when people sell dogs, like uh, full-blooded dogs, they're like, we only want the best dogs to mate. Yeah. But yeah, so the seeds from this pumpkin, um, would, it said they would probably, it didn't say for certain, but it said they would probably auction these seeds off. So my mind is like, well, how much do people pay 
for these giant pumpkin seeds. And I didn't, I, I didn't find anything out. But I'm definitely curious, and I'm going to delve into that and try to find out. So. Well, I have uh, a couple pumpkin facts. I have one more, and then I'll be done, and then you can have at it. Okay. After talking about the world's largest pumpkin, you obviously have to look into the world's largest pumpkin pie. The world's largest pumpkin pie weighed, get this, 3,699 pounds. It was made in Ohio uh, in, in 2010. The diameter of the pie was 20 feet. The crust was made out of 440 sheets of dough, and other ingredients were the normal pumpkin pie ingredients, uh, canned pumpkin, evaporated milk, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, it, I saw a picture of it also, like the diameter. It looked like a swimming pool. It was humongous. That's too much pie. That's too much it pumpkin pie. It was so big. It was so big. And I'm like, who helped them Do you- eat this afterwards? What kind of pumpkin facts did you find out? Well, we are currently being downloaded in 10 countries, but none of them are in France. So I'm not, I don't think I'm going to worry about losing any listeners over how I'm fixing to butcher this. But, uh, the pumpkin name came from a French explorer and his name was, hmm, thick French accent, Jacques Cartier. We're going to go with that. Does that sound good? Yeah. Okay. Anyways, he found them. Yeah. And he named them... Gross melons. Yeah, did you know that? Yeah. But it was pronounced pompions. <laughs> so he was like, hey, look at those pompions. <laughs> and then I would imagine, eventually we just said, what'd he say? Pumpkins? Okay, I guess they're pumpkins. Pumpkins. <laughs> pumpkins? You know, people say that to each other, like, hey, come here, pumpkin. That's that's weird, right? Why no, I think it's like, cute. Yeah. I, I don't know, because pumpkins are kind of lopsided and like... I don't, I don't know, know, but I love them. Okay. I love them. Oh, you know, I also learned that Native Americans use, um, they would peel the pumpkins and, like, I guess, dry it out and use it to weave mats. We have pumpkin mats. <laughs> I'm down with pumpkins. We have spent too much time okay. talking about pumpkins. <laughs> I'm, I'm satisfied. I've, I, you know, now that we've talked about pumpkins. Now that we've bored our, my love of pumpkins. We've bored our listeners for <laughs> 10 minutes talking about pumpkins. Well, hey, you know, Oh, was oh, Eric from last episode wanted me to talk more. Eric, this is and your fault. You hear this? It's Eric's this is fault. this is what you did. You did this. This is what Eric. happens when we talk about what I want to talk about. We talk about pumpkins. Yak. Yak. Oh. Were we supposed to bring a different noise this time? I said the same one from last time. Oh, I did duck. I said quack quack. Quack quack. For any everybody listening, that whole conversation's on Eric. So y'all need to find him. He's in Davenport. Which Davenport? We're not sure. <laughs> How about let's go ahead and knock out a commercial? All right. Did you know? <laughs> Did you know? You do it. Did you know? Did you know? If you live in the greater Wilmington, North Carolina area and are just hanging out at home, you can go online to order alcohol and it will be delivered to your house. Where might you find such a place? Bottomsupdelivery.com Where you can party like a pirate. Arr. She's a pirate. The next thing I want to talk about, Facebook. Again? I went... You didn't have enough Facebook ranting last time? I definitely ranted on Facebook, and I'm still really upset about it, but that's not what I want to talk about. What do you want to talk about? It. Punkin. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm trying to do something heartfelt right now. For real. Heartfelt. I'm with you, Punkin. I'm going to go jump off that balcony. No, you're not. We had an amazing response. We did. To the Facebook rant. It just... I don't even know what to say. I'm I'm in t- I'm grateful. Mm-hmm. Like I'm humbled. It's insane. It's inspiring. It really is. It, it goes to show you that even if you think this is the best podcast ever, best, best podcast, podcast ever. ever, we can't do anything without the listeners. And they really, they really joined together last week and made it happen. They for like us. us. They really, really like us. At least 257 of them do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but all kidding aside, it was, I thank you so much. We appreciate every single like, every share, every comment. We really do. Because you guys joined together, episode 26 was the fastest growing episode we've ever had. Thank you guys. Very much. Thank you. Now, now do it again. Please help us. <laughs> help help i downloaded a new app for my phone 
Did you? I, I haven't downloaded any new apps in a while. Other than, like, I think I downloaded a bank app. Like, we switched banks not long ago. Oh, that's such an adult thing. Like, I didn't, I didn't download a game or anything. It's like, it was an app for a bank. <laughs> I gotta balance my bank funds. <laughs> yeah, I think that was the last app I downloaded. <laughs> that's so lame. So I downloaded an app called Fun Facts. Oh, that's really awesome. And I haven't gone that's... through it yet. So I thought... Hey, you could have looked up Fun Facts about pumpkins. I, I'm done with pumpkins. Oh. As a matter of fact... As soon as we're done, I'm going to start throwing pumpkin stuff away. Oh, no, you're not. So I thought for a portion of the show, we could uh, just open up this app and see what we find. Typewriter is the longest word that can be made using the letters only on one row of the keyboard. Hey, that's pretty cool. The average person makes about 1,140 telephone calls each year. Mm, do you I think wonder, that's recent? I don't know, because like, everybody People call texts each other. Now. Yeah. yeah. Like, if if anybody really knows me, they know, don't call. Because a lot of times I'm, there's screaming children in the background. If you got to tell me something or ask me something, just text me. I don't even want to talk on the phone. I always text. If I'm not texting, I'm watching videos. That's what my phone's for. My phone ain't even meant to make calls on. <laughs> Cell phones nowadays, like, nobody, nobody makes calls on their phone anymore. Like, the next cell phone that came out... The next cell phone that comes out, oh my lord. The next cell phone that comes out, if they're like, this cell phone does everything except make phone calls, everybody would buy it. Because nobody makes phone calls anymore. A shark is the only fish that can blink with both eyes. Do you think that's accurate? How do they know? So fish only blink with one eye? Is that what you're trying to say? Like, I guess. Like one eye and then the other? Like, Hey, you did pretty good. I know you have a hard time with that. I, I have a hard time winking. Yeah, I can't do, like, the whole one eye at a time thing. It takes, like, it takes every muscle in my face to close one eyelid. <laughs> if anybody ever wants to see it, I have a video of that. <laughs> okay, last one. Specifically for you. That's why we're going to stop Is it another about one. sharks? No. Cockroaches. <gasps> oh, my God. Can uh, we? Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, look, the hair is all in the back of my neck. Stand in the <laughs> I can't take it. I can't take it. Or the crunch, like when you kill them. You mean the crunch when I kill them? Yeah. Okay. Be the man right now. Kill it on the first try. <laughs> Cockroaches can live for nine days. I want to throw up. You gonna make it through this? Yeah. Okay. Nine days. Nine days. After. Their heads have been cut off. Are you kidding me? That's a long time. Nine days after they've been decapitated? Yeah. Which, do you think both halves? Or is it just like the body? It's like their head is just sitting there, going, sitting there going, this sucks. My nose itches. Do cartwrights have noses? I don't know. I don't care. <laughs> Devil creatures. Ugh. Nine days. So you think it's just like their body is just like wandering around bumping into things? I don't know. I see, I seen I seen someone take a chicken one time and shake it real fast, and that chicken walked around for a little while before it passed out. Can you breathe? Can you breathe right now? I got like goosebumps. Anybody that didn't know, Katie is horribly <sighs> horrified of creepy crawlies and flying stingy things or slithery things. We're actually getting pretty far in this already. Why don't we go ahead and knock out uh, one more commercial? Mm-hmm. I'm going to let you do this one because I'm going to mess it up. Oh, GallianosFaction.com. So Michael Gallianos is a musician, and he's got a new single coming out featuring Jenny Monday. You were right last time, by the way. I thought that was. So uh, go check it out. You never know. Could be some music you like. Could be some music you don't like. You'll never know unless you go and check it out. And he even gave us a recording. We'll throw it in right now so that you can hear it. A Galianos has a new single called Wonder coming out soon, featuring me, Jenny Monday, on vocals. Visit GallianosFaction.com for more. So why don't we move on to the part of the show where we, uh, I don't know, what, what, do you, what do you call it? Respond to everybody on Facebook. Or not Facebook, just social media. People that have written into us about things. Okay. Uh, the first one is from JT. Hey, JT. He says he would like to hear a little more about comic books. I know you're not so much into that, so what I thought I would do is just run through... No, no. Okay. It's not that I'm not into comic books. Here we go. I read comic books. 
When, when, not, when's the last time you read a comic book? I actually haven't read one recently. I think it was, no, it was like a couple weeks ago. I hear you talk about comic books all the time. What did your phone just do? <laughs> your phone has a mind of its own. What was that? It just lit up. Like, I could see it through the screen, but I was like, what? What were we saying? I'm oh, sorry. We, Steve's messing around again, I guess. Um, I hear you talk about comic books all the time, so. It's not that I'm not excited about it. I'm just like, mm. You just don't want to talk about it. <laughs> no, no. All right. Well, it's for JT. Well, no, all I was going to do is I was just going to cover what I'm reading right now and I'm excited about. How about that? Okay. For JT's sake. For JT's sake. Here you go, JT. Because we would do anything. No, I take that back. We would not do anything. We would do a lot for our, <laughs> our loyal fans and listeners. We do almost anything. Almost we're just, anything. We're just not going to Eric's house. That's We're not doing that. <laughs> Uh, right now, I am reading Outcast, which has been great, and I really wanted you to read that. I read the first few. I just haven't gotten caught up. I'm behind. For anybody that doesn't and know, the, what, I really liked the first few. So anybody that doesn't know what Outcast is, it's it was a really, book. really good. Are I'm you going to keep cutting me off? <laughs> I told you that. I'm Come on, man. Go ahead. Come on. I'm sorry, Pumpkin. Oh, Outcast is a book about a guy who can. He doesn't know that he can do this at first. But he can help fight demons that have possessed people. But it's by the same guy who wrote The Walking Dead. And actually, Cinemax has picked it up to do a TV show I'm really excited about. But it's a really, really well-written story. Yeah. And I'm having a lot of fun with it. It actually has um, a really cool feature, I guess you would say, with the artwork. And you could probably explain Oh, the this. boxes? Yeah. It's like, um, it has like boxes within the boxes they kind of highlights like an important not thing like about anybody the scene. for anybody that that reads comic books not like a panel it's not like a panel it's like when the artist does like a full page piece of art he'll do a little pop-up box that's almost like a magnifying glass and it goes hey you should really pay attention to this part yeah it's of like it. there's like a whole yeah. scene and then it's like a very small portion of that scene will be in this little box so it kind of draws your attention where you see the whole scene but then i'm making like hand gestures you see the whole scene but then like it kind of highlights like hey you need to look here and it's it's yeah, really kind of cool it's a really the first time feature. the first time that you see that is in issue number 1 where there's a kid inside of a cupboard, and he's just eating snacks. And his mother yells at him, you know, you need to get out of there, you gotta go to bed. But then he puts that little box up, and it zooms in, and you can see that he's, he's, he's got his hands in like a chip bag, but he's eating his fingers. And that's the first, like, clue that there's something going on no, with this There's kid. something wrong. Something's wrong. Kid's eating his own fingers. There's something right here. <laughs> the most excited I've been about a book... Here recently is uh, Airboy. I mentioned something very briefly. I have not read that one. You haven't. I've I mentioned something You've very told briefly. Told me about it, but I haven't read it. Last episode. If you are of the age of eighteen and want to read something kind of cool, this is a good book. Airboy was a character from the nineteen forties and fifties, and the company that he was a real Captain America ish kind of character, real cheesy, you know, kind of character. Well, the company that owned him went under. And the, I guess the copyrights became available and Image picked it up and gave it to a writer and was like, here, write a four issue story about Airboy. I forgot what his name was. What's his name again? So the writer actually writes the story about himself trying to write the story of Airboy. Kind of like a weird twist. Because that's a way to overcome writer's block. Yeah. Uh -huh. But uh, he ends up picking up the artist in the book, not in real life, picks up the artist and they're trying to come up with an idea and they can't. So then they're like, oh, well, let's go to the bar and have a drink. And then they're having a drink and like no ideas are coming. And then the writer goes, how about let's do some Coke? And it just goes way off in the left field. It's, it, I don't know. It's just kind of a cool concept. It's only going to be four issues. So it's real easy for someone to pick up, read and be done with. There you go, JT. JT's comic minute. <laughs> Megan would like to know if we're called up on the newest season of Gotham because she's really into the Joker character. Because we know Megan how she is Megan, about villains. Megan is my best friend, by the way. I know I've talked about this before, but if anybody who doesn't know, I know Megan personally. <laughs> and Megan goes for the villains. She's a she's a fan of the villains. She likes the bad boys. To answer your question, Megan, we are actually not caught up. But the very last episode we've seen 
was we, we, we saw seen we seen the we last saw? episode we seen the last episode we seen what are you making fun of me for is it saw the last episode we saw the last episode we saw pumpkin was uh the one where they <laughs> why you say it so with like so <laughs> much hatefulness say, pumpkin you can't say pumpkin that way the guy in that scary movie did pumpkin head you ever seen pumpkin head um Ooh, we'll watch that sometime since you like pumpkin so much. Oh, you might ruin it for me. But the last episode we watched, how about that word, watched, is okay. that okay? Yeah, You're okay with that pumpkin? I approve. Was when they introduced the character that I believe is going to be the Joker, and he was great. Yeah. So I really look forward yeah. to seeing it. Yeah, I don't think we're, we're not too far from No, no, up. we're not too far. Because we were watching it. Every week, but um, yeah, we got we got behind, and then yeah, we just haven't ever caught up. But they just put on Netflix, so we'll get around to it. Cause we mm, we watch a lot more Netflix than we actually do TV. The only thing we ever watch on actual TV is football. Uh, Robert wants to know. He says he's known us for a really long time and wants to hear one of our childhood stories. Do you have any good childhood stories you want to share? Oh my gosh! Well, I I don't even know where to start. Um. Uh, oh wow. A childhood, that's like a lot of years. Yeah, that's a, a whole lot, lot of happened. years. Um, oh, like no story like stands out. He also says don't give up on Facebook. He's following us. Thank you. Thank you. And I don't like calling him Robert. I can't, like, I know that's what his Facebook says, but I'm like, that's Bobby. <laughs> Bobby. You guys, um, did you guys have like a, like a band together? We didn't or have. Was it just like what I know? You guys like, like wrote a band. song. Yeah, I know there was at least there was like one song. We performed together at church. Yeah, I, I was there. That's what yeah. I know. I know you were there. We did puppet time. I remember. But a story, a good story from my childhood. I have a good story. I don't if I if I've told this one before. You stop me. I used to watch the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Power Rangers, you know, all of that kind of stuff, and. uh all the kids in the neighborhood, we get together and we would fight. Cause that's, you know, that's what we were what watching. We, we would fight. We, you we would had, discuss who was going to be which turtle, which Ninja right. Turtle. We're like, I'm Raphael. No, I'm Raphael. We even had a game where I'm we would, the, I'm the pink ranger. Kimberly. Sorry. Yeah. Her name sorry. is Kimberly. Get it right. <laughs> I was going to marry her one day, but I'm glad I didn't. I'm glad I'm with you and I take back everything I just said. <laughs> you were so, like, you looked at me so serious just now. Well, that look you gave me made me re retract everything, so <laughs> I think we're even. But we even had this game where we would ride our bikes, right? There'd be like four of us, two on each side of this little dirt, rocky road. <laughs> what? What are you laughing about? I know this story. And one person would get on a bicycle <laughs> and ride between the four people. <laughs> oh, gosh. And we would all have sticks. And our goal was to throw the sticks into the front spokes of the bike. And if you did it... Whoever was on that bike would flip. Yeah, that sounds like a bad day. So the purpose of the story was I went to school and imagine this after playing Ninja Turtles and Power Rangers and let's flip the kids off the bike. I had bruises. The school system wanted to know why. So I actually had someone come to my parents' house. Are you serious? Oh, like they, yeah. Oh, my gosh. So they actually took me for a walk down the road and tried to get me to, like, tell them what was going on. <laughs> we know your parents are abusing you. Why don't you just tell us about it? It's okay if you talk to us. It's fine. I mean, I'm glad they did it because they were concerned. But, yeah, I got I, I put my mom and dad in a weird situation because... Oh, my gosh. And my parents weren't abusive whatsoever. As a matter of fact... I think I could count on one hand how many times I've gotten a spanking in my life. I like that's the kind of stuff that scares me. Like people who are decent parents and don't abuse your kids. Like kids, kids are going to get bruises. Kids are going to have accidents. And we've already like our kids just turned a year old, and we've already had a um, broken leg. Yeah, Riley broke his leg, and with any incident now with kids like the parents you get looked at like you did it on purpose we know you're abusing your child and riley was only like six months old at the time i'm i'm glad he won't remember it so i mean he was just a baby and he broke his leg um for those of you who listened you know what happened for those of you who didn't hear that episode uh he rolled off the bed off of our bed well we don't give out all the detail you better go back and listen to these episodes <laughs> he rolled off our bed 
and uh, it broke his femur. Um, but yeah, for, for those people who don't abuse your kids, like kids are going to get broken bones mm-hmm. and sprains and right. bruises and it's bite and it's, marks on their forehead. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And our kids, like they get bruises on cause they're like, they're trying to learn how to walk and they're not quite there yet. So they fall down a lot. And like the other day, Riley had several bruises on his legs just from where he falls a lot. And I, I went to town, I, w- I was going shopping, and I was like, I got in the store, and the kids are, like, strapped into the car, and I'm like, oh, my God, Riley's got, like, bruises on his legs. <laughs> and I was like, people are going to think that I'm, like, beating my child. And I don't. I swear I don't. <laughs> it was probably Reagan. <laughs> so, I have a story. Okay. Okay, go ahead. You and I don't story? even know why. It's, um... I think I was I was I think I was about fourteen or fifteen at the time. I was in I was in high school, like early high school, because my brother and sister they they were not going to the same school as me. Um, we were on a different schedule. We had like a half day at school, and me and my best friend at the time, Victoria, we came back to my house after we got out of school early. My brother and sister were still in school, and we had a go kart. And I was like, oh, my brother and sister aren't home. I don't have to take turns with anybody. I don't got to share. Let's take the go-kart out. So me and Victoria, we decided we're going to ride the go-kart. And it was only a one-seater, so we had to take turns. So we went, like, down this road across the street and down some paths in the woods. And we took turns. And one of us would ride my bike and the other would ride the go-kart. Well, we You had to pedal really hard to keep up with a go-kart, didn't you? Yeah. (laughs) Out there in the woods, I'm like... (laughs) Well, I mean, like, we didn't just take off and leave each other, you know. But anyway, we got really far away from home, down in the woods, and it started. Two young white girls down in the woods. <laughs> well, really I mean, far this was home. years ago, and, you know, we live in a small town, and you didn't think about things like That's that. That's how a horror story starts out. But uh, anyway, we got quite a ways away from home. It starts to rain right about the time the go kart runs out of gas. That's great. Oh, my gosh. So you had so, to walk home? Did you have to push the go-kart I had home? to put... I wasn't going to leave it there in the woods. Right. Okay. I had to push the go-kart all the way back home in the rain. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, at least I have no idea why I even thought about that story, but so there you go. There's I've this, never heard that story before. That was really? nice. Yeah, it was good. Rico wants us to talk about relationships, and I just actually sent a long text message to a friend of mine the day he was getting married. And I'm going to go ahead and share that with, or we'll sort of share it with everybody else. Long story short, when you decide to get in a relationship with someone, I'm telling you now from experience, don't just get in a relationship because it seems like that's what everybody else is doing. If you... Oh, Lord, no. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. If you were in a relationship... I've been in a relationship before (laughs) where I've sat there and just went... I wish she would just shut up. <laughs> That's like the most horrible reason ever to be in a relationship. Make sure you're in a relationship with someone that you can talk to. Obviously, I am in a relationship with someone I can talk to. Mm-hmm. And it's pumpkin. working out really well. Please stop calling me Pumpkin. <laughs> I'm going to call you that I don't all want the time. you to call me Pumpkin anymore. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call you that all the time. I think I'm reaching the point where I don't want to talk to her anymore. <laughs> but no, seriously, you take your time. That. Take your time and make it good because if you're in a good relationship, it's the best thing that ever happened to you. Having someone there with you to share everything and that would include the bad stuff. It's a good time to have someone you care about. My mom, uh, she's a very wise lady and all my life she's always said that love is an action word. She has said that many, many times. And the, yeah, it is. Oh, my goodness. You need to stop. The older I get, the more I, true I realize that it is. Love, while it is an emotion, that's not true love. True love is, it is, it's action. It's giving and doing for another person. Marriage is not to make yourself happy. Marriage is all about making the other person happy. It's deep. That's that's what I have to say about that. Fantastic. Well, I mean, he, you know, <laughs> Rico, you should have been a little more specific because we could just ramble on all day. <laughs> you know who else responded? Shane from Dirty Scarlet. Oh, Hey, Shane. Hey, Shane. <laughs> he said he would like for us to talk about uh, stinky plugs. Like earrings? Yeah. 
Oh my god, it's the worst smell it's, ever. It's like rotten goat cheese. <laughs> it really is. If you don't if you don't clean your ears, it's bad. For anyone who does not have gauges in, and if you've seen me in person, you know what I'm talking about. I've got the big one inch discs in my ears that everybody seems to want to talk about that don't have them. If you, they, maybe they're fascinated, okay? And that's fine. And I'm, I'm good with it. I'm okay with the attention. Because that's why I did it. If you have earrings like that and you don't wash them, they, they smell, so smell horrible. Oh God, they smell so bad. Like I've been in, I've been in bed before. This it doesn't happen to me very often because I try to take my plugs out while I'm in the shower and wash them. But I was, I've been in the bed before and I've like, I, I'll roll over and like one of my earrings will fall out and I'll wake up and be like, oh, I gotta go wash my earrings. I know Riley. I have, I have gauges also. Mine are not an inch. Mine are only half an inch. But that's still pretty significant. And yeah, they do smell really awful if you don't clean them. And anyway, Riley is in this phase lately where he's very fascinated with our earrings, especially with daddy's earrings, because probably they're so big. And he wants to like pull them out and stuff all the time. And I'm like, oh, Riley, no, that's gross. Don't, don't do that. Oh, <laughs> like, don't, just don't touch it. <laughs> they constantly want to pull my earrings mm -hmm. out. Yeah. Reagan, not so much. She's like, I don't think she's ever tried to pull out my earrings, but Riley, it's all the time. So this is what I'll say. If you have earrings and they're not gauges, you need to take them out and clean them sometime. Because I'd be willing to bet the same stuff that grows on mine grows on yours. It's just that mine's a lot bigger. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Did you hear that? What? What was that noise? I don't know. I just heard like something scrape across the wall. Hmm. You didn't hear it? Mm-mm. It sounded like fingernails. It feels like the temperature in the room just dropped a little bit. I think our ghost Steve is back. I think it's time we put it into this this ghost thing we have. You know, you know who we should call? Ghostbusters. I don't think we need to call Ghostbusters. I don't think it's that What's, intense. It's just a song. Who are you gonna call? No, I'm just saying. I don't. Ghostbusters. Like, he doesn't. Ghostbusters. Or I mean, okay. Anybody doesn't know if we have a ghost named Steve. We named him Steve. I don't know if that's his real name, but he won't talk to us. He just messes with things. He don't. He don't like. It's not bad. I don't need four professionals coming in here with proton packs, like, shooting up the place. If there was only something smaller we could do other than big bolts of electricity. Did you know there is something we could do? What? Go to ghoulbegone.com. Ghoulbegone.com? Ghoulbegone.com. What is ghoulbegone.com? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, you asked me what it is. You're supposed to know. To say they sell items to help you get rid of ghostly problems. They sell items to help you get rid. Oh God! <laughs> try it again. Try it what? again. I was thinking faster than I could talk. <laughs> to help you get rid. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we have to rush to something. <laughs> <laughs> come on, we're doing we we were doing such a good job with this commercial. Lean back in. Come on, lean back in. You okay? You can try it again? I need a breath. <clears throat> Alright, try it. Come on, we they're paying us money. We gotta get this right. Come on. <laughs> I know it's not much money, but come on, it's money. They sell items to help you get rid of all your ghouls. Really? And ghosts. Wow. I'm going to go there now. Where is it at again? Ghoulbegone.com. Let's see what they have at ghoulbegone.com. That's ghoulbegone.com. Like ghoul, then the letter B, gone, dot com. Oh, that's why I couldn't pull it up because I was typing the word B-E. Okay, so let yeah. me try what you're saying. Get rid <laughs> of a ghost. <laughs> 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 That's exactly what I was thinking just now. Okay, cool. Yeah, it says here that for only $99, I could get the Ghoul Buster Combo Pack. How many ghouls does that get rid of? I don't know. It doesn't say. But we only got one, so we might as well give it a shot, right? Okay, the Ghoul Buster Combo Pack comes with the Ghoul Be Gone Spray, so you can, like, spray your room, and it makes them stay away. It also comes with a refill, just in case they come back. And then it comes with the Ghoul Be Gone Candles as well. So it's like a triple threat kind of thing. All right. Now, if you don't think you need quite that much for only $56, you can get one candle with one thing of spray. If you don't think you need that much for only $56, you can get one of the big candles, one of the small candles, and one thing of spray. That seems like a good deal. 
But if you don't think your ghost problem is that bad, which this might be what we need, you can order just the spray. So you can just spray your room out real fast. You know, the Steve's in here hanging out, just right in the face. 22 bucks. Steve's gone. So if you're having the ghostly problems in the month of October, go to ghoulbegone.com. You know what it's time for, right? Bob O'Clock News. <laughs> Welcome to the Bob O'Clock News. Here's the first article I want to speak very briefly on. A guy just got put in the uh, Ripley's Believe It or Not, or it was the Unbelievable Rip Cycle Art Contest from Ripley's. He made a giant picture of Taylor Swift made completely out of gumballs. What? (laughs) Did you hear Taylor Swift, a fan, made her a knitted sweater that had a picture? um, I think it was a picture from her latest album. It looks like a Polaroid picture of her. Really? And it even has, like, the writing. Did she wear it? Uh, Well, I saw a picture of her, and I think she had it on. Okay, that's cool. Um, But, yeah, like... It's knitted, and it's a Polaroid picture of Taylor Swift, and then the picture even has writing on the bottom. Wow, that's crazy. And it was knitted by a fan, and I thought that was incredible. Well, this guy made his picture out of 17,625 gumballs. Like, not chewed up gumballs, right? Wow. Right. Isn't that sweet? That's that's pretty awesome. This is why I brought that up. I think... Something happened at uh while I was running the comic book store last week that I didn't tell you about. There was a concert in the parking lot, and it was like a shag concert. So honestly, there was nothing but like old rich white people out in the parking lot. I'm talking about hundreds. It was crazy. They were out there dancing, having a good time. Well, I walked to the door and looked outside, and there was this old man standing there. He easily was 70 years old. You know, crouched over just a little bit, kind of shaky, right? He had a black t-shirt on with huge letters that said, Taylor Swift or die. Oh my gosh. Well, I had put my phone on the charger, so I was like, no, I got to get a picture. And I ran back and I grabbed my phone and when I came back, he was gone. Oh my gosh. That is, I can't believe you didn't take a picture. (laughs) I didn't have my phone on me and nobody's going to believe me now. That's so awesome. You know, I didn't even Google, like, if you Google it, you can see what the shirt looks like. I'm sure you can, because I'm. I, I, he didn't make it. It wasn't a knitted shirt like <laughs> you're talking about. He didn't knit this shirt, huh? But it was. It was absolutely. Or make it, it was out one of, of the gumballs. highlights. One of the highlights of my day. That is. That's fantastic. That's one of those rare things that you're like. I'm gonna remember that. I'm glad I saw that. Okay. Next article. There was a plane in Maryland, uh, Delta Airlines, that got grounded because one of the passengers had a tarantula in like a case. <gasps> No. And it got out. <gasps> no. Oh. <laughs> I'm about tired of all these mother fighters on this mother plane. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I didn't see that coming at all. <laughs> I'm not even going to read any more of the story. <laughs> I think we're just going to stop there. But no, uh, they well, put all the passengers on that's another. That's a good reason to be grounded. <laughs> There's a tarantula running around on the plane. You got you to gotta do something about it. You can't just be flying and this tarantula's running around. So they, um, they put all the passengers. <laughs> stop making that face. I'm trying to talk. <laughs> Uh, I feel like it's crawling on me. (laughs) You and your creepy crawlies. They put all the passengers on another plane and sent them off. But they said they did locate the spider and that there were no other ones. So everybody was safe and sound. Here was another story that I came across, and I wanted to get your opinion on it. Okay. A Washington State school district has banned the game of tag because they they (laughs) deemed it too unsafe for children. Oh, what? What is what is our society coming to that kids can't play tag? Okay, listen up for a second. I'm doing the edits on the show. And I had no idea that Katie just started speaking gibberish until I listened to it again. I wanted to put this in so that you could fully appreciate what is getting ready to happen. 
Here you go. <laughs> they said they're banning it because they felt the tag action was <laughs> Wait, how too are, intense. How are these kids playing tag? Like, <laughs> and the- are they like tag? You're at like punch each other in the face? Like you just tag? You just what the heck? Man? Tag. <laughs> <laughs> And they said some of the kids were running sporadically, not paying attention to where they were going and slamming into other children. <laughs> what school are they at that they're having tag issues? Maybe, maybe instead of banning the game of tag, they need to just give the kids a lesson on proper tag gameplay. Banning the game of tag. What's next? Hide and seek? Go fish? <laughs> Did you say goat fish? What are you talking about? Go fish. Oh, oh, sorry. I was the children's <laughs> game. I was trying to pull up my next my next article. Jump rope, no jumping rope. <laughs> Ropes are dangerous. I was trying to pull up my next article, and I thought you were talking about goat fish. <laughs> I was like, I missed it. I lost one. Where are we at? No double Dutch for you kids today. Okay, last last one because we're closing in on an hour. There was a study that was done. That proved men can tell if a woman is faithful just by looking at her. Really now? So what they did was they got a whole bunch of guys. It was a it was a hundred college aged men, and they showed them a picture of two different women. One of the women had been in a relationship that they were unfaithful, and one of them didn't. And eighty percent of these men pointed out the right woman. How? Well, they don't show a picture, but I'm assuming she probably looked like a whore. That's the only thing I can figure. I mean, I need no more information about this study. Like, was that it? Was the woman like? Was she dressed more provocatively? So it's like they automatically think that she's more likely that's to be what, that's what promiscuous, I would think. or it's got to be right. I don't know because that I I don't know how else they would be because I've to. never I've never been walking down the street and saw a woman and thought hmm she's a cheater she must cheat on her husband I mean like I never thought that before I've never thought that the yeah, things I'd like to know a little more about the things that. people study nowadays it's it's crazy right why why did they do that study did they do a group of women were women able to pick out men that were cheaters like no we're too good at it <laughs> all right so we got one more thing to talk about. We had a listener give us an idea of something we could do for the show. There's a website called Patreon.com. But spelled like Patreon. Right. P-A-T-R-E-O-N. And I'll, I'll, I'll throw up a link. But basically what this website is for are people that do things like we do with the podcast. Because as anybody that listens to the episode knows, you're getting everything for absolutely free. Well, it's not free to do. Yeah, it's, it's not free for us. We, we pay out of pocket all the expense. If you enjoy our show, we're going to have a page where you can go and actually make a donation for the show. You can donate a, as little as a dollar. $1. Yeah, you can donate as little as $1. So if we get this page going, what we're planning on doing is the money that that's going to be donated is going to be used to help pay for the expenses of the show and the things that we have to do. So I thought... For anybody that would like to do this, it really means that you enjoy the show. So maybe if you're okay, you listening? I'm, talk, I'm listening. I'm talking to you. Pumpkin. Maybe, oh my God, with this <laughs> pumpkin stuff. Maybe what we can do is every so often, the people that, you know, pledge to the page will do a secret podcast for them. Secret episode. An episode that nobody else will hear. What do you think? Sounds like a good idea to me, pumpkin. She keeps calling me pumpkin, so I think we're going to end the show. I, I don't know. I, I can't. <laughs> I'm just, I'm done with pumpkins. Anyways, we'll put the link up for you when this show goes up and uh, no pressure. It, it's kind of like a digital tip jar is really what it is. Yeah. Just if you like our show, just go, hey, you know, we like you. Tip us like your, like your waitress, like your bartender, anybody else you tip. And uh, I'm not bringing you any money food, be for good to go to good use. What? I'm not, I'm not bringing anybody any food or drinks. <laughs> No, just but no, we entertainment. Really, yeah, it's, you know, either way, we're still going to continue to put shows out. But if you feel like you can do it, then awesome. So I'll throw the link up when we put the episode out. And if you want to go to it, awesome. We appreciate it. Well, do you have anything else? No, I'm good. Well, bye. Bye.